a few days ago, I made my first video about the sun. And in it, I asked if you guys wanted a part two to it. The answer was overwhelmingly yes. In fact, I didn't get a single no. But maybe that's because nobody actually watches my videos. Now, before we get some more crazy sun stuff, I appreciate would like the video, subscribe to your channel, and hit the notification bell to stay tuned for future content. Okay, so what's next on the list of crazy sun stuff? Well, how about the fact that it does more than just keeps surrounding planets warm? That's right, there's a phenomenon called the solar wind, and basically what it is is a stream of ionized material that radiates outward from the sun. The effect of this stream of charged particles has a lot to do with the planet, and specifically whether it has a magnetic field or not. The planets with strong magnetic fields, such as Earth and Jupiter, are able to redirect these particles to their poles, creating those beautiful auroras that we all know and love. Yes, Jupiter has the aurora borealis too. In fact, they're actually many times more intense than they are on Earth. The whole time, the actual impact on the surface of these planets is negligible. But what happens if you take the magnetic field out of the equation? Well, this enables the solar wind to attack the planet more directly. Over millions of years, the atmosphere of the planet slowly erodes, uh, eventually reducing it to a thin shell of gas surrounding the planet, and allowing harmful radiation to reach the surface of that planet. And this is actually theorized to what happened to, to Mars millions of years ago, when its own magnetic field shut down. Sometimes, however, the sun can get much, much more violent. The sun also has a magnetic field. But unlike those of the planets, it's really wonky. Why? Well, the sun rotates faster at the equator than it does at the poles. Over time, this confusing rotation pattern causes the magnetic field to get all tangled up. Uh, and when these tangles happen, a ton of energy is bottled up. When these tangles finally, you know, untangle, they do so quickly and suddenly, releasing a ton of energy in the process. The result is a coronal mass ejection, or CME. CMEs are essentially huge, fast-moving bubbles of plasma that move through space. So, most of the time, well, CMEs just aimlessly wander through the cosmos, never actually hitting a planet. However, when it does hit a planet, so, the result can be catastrophic. The magnetic field is unable to contain such a mass of energy, and it snaps back into the planet. On any other planet, this only means stronger aurorae. On Earth, however, these snaps can wipe out entire power grips, basically destroy the internet, and essentially send us back to the Stone Age for quite a while. One such thing happened in 1989, when a CME caused Quebec's entire power grid to black out for 9 hours. In 2012, we had an near miss when the strongest CME in centuries missed Earth by just 9 days. So, if that had hit, then power grids would have failed worldwide causing a global catastrophe that would have taken years and trillions of dollars to prepare. Fortunately, we're safe for another year or two, as we're still in a solar minimum, a place where solar activity is less pronounced than usual. But come 2023, watch out. And that wraps it up for this video. Stay tuned for the premiere of the new Planet series tomorrow. And as always, I appreciate you like your video, subscribe to your channel, and hit the notification bell to stay tuned for future content. Thanks and have a great day.